Hi everyone. I'm going to show you something you won't find anywhere else. And that's how to build a Wi-Fi music streamer with top tier sound quality that doesn't cost a lot of money. It's an exact copy of the one I built for my friend Anna, and she was thrilled with the way it made her music sound. The easy assembly steps need no soldering, no electronics knowledge, and no programming. If you're using Bluetooth to play music on your stereo, like Anna was, it's time to stop. Bluetooth is great for cars and earbuds, but Bluetooth transmission compresses the sound, which just sucks the life and vitality from the music. The loss of quality is clearly audible if you have nice speakers. To hear your music in the way it was created in all its uncompressed glory, Wi-Fi can stream the music to your stereo exactly as it was mastered in the studio. It's as perfect as you can get. But that's only half the story. That uncompressed music is stored and transmitted as just a bunch of numbers. To make sound from the numbers, you need a component called a digital to analog converter, commonly known as a DAC. DACs are everywhere in things like TVs, phones, cars, and headphones. Most of them are very cheap and sound like it. Good quality DACs can get very pricey, but to get high quality music, you need a Wi-Fi receiver and a good DAC. This streamer box has both, and it'll take your sound quality to the next level for far less money than you'd expect. This whole build is done using only simple hand tools. The streamer board we're using is the UptoStream Mini, and we have an add-on DAC board. The only other materials are a set of M3 standoffs and a plastic case, in this case it's five inches by four inches. Okay, we start by taking the add-on DAC board and loosely screwing a nut, an M3 nylon nut, onto a screw that goes through one of the mounting holes. And we want to make sure that the screw doesn't protrude through the nut because these nuts are only there for spacing. And then we do that for the other three holes. This shows how those nuts have given us good spacing for the board and the correct height for the connectors. The streamer board connectors need a different height, so I'll be using this M3 6mm standoff. So what we do is we just put the standoff through the board and then attach it with a threaded pillar like this one. And do that for all four screw holes. Now we line up the streamer board and the DAC board in the plastic case. And we want the connectors along one edge by the hinge of the case. And we want the white sockets on the streamer board next to the DAC board. That's very important. And now just tape those boards down to stop them moving around. Just a little bit of uh, painter's tape. And we need to get it taped in multiple directions to hold it in place. Now the DAC board. Yeah, that's not going to move. And now we can mark off the positions of all of the connectors. The only connectors we really need is the USB on the streamer board for power. We mark a U around the switch on the streamer board. That's going to form a button. And then we mark the two RCA connectors. You can see where we've marked the positions for the holes. And we'll make small starter holes using a pin vise. If you don't have one of these, I'll put a link in the description where you can get it. For this U-shape, we use the pin vise to punch holes in the four corners first. Now we enlarge all of those holes using a 1 8 drill bit in the pin vise. We're going to get the holes to their final size using a step drill like this one. The step drill goes in a standard screwdriver. We can use an electric screwdriver, but there's no need to. We then have to trim the inside of the holes with a sharp knife. I use the step drill to cut the holes to half an inch, and that's pretty good. Now we use the pin vise to make small perforations along each of these lines in this U-shape between the four holes that we drilled earlier. We use a knife to cut between the perforations. It does help to have a new blade. And we do that very carefully. And when we're all done cutting, it looks something like this. And this U-shape now forms the button for the on-off switch. Now with the board taped in place, we can mark the holes. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark one hole. 
and drill that one and screw the board in place. Then we can get the others more precise. Like before, we start the holes with a small drill and then we'll enlarge them to 1 8 inch. And I do the same with the DAC board. For the streamer board hole, we use a six millimeter standoff and a six millimeter screw. For the DAC board, I'm using a 12 millimeter screw and an M3 nylon nut. And we can put the boards on those standoffs. Be sure to keep the spaces in the three holes that are not gonna be attached. Aha, to get the DAC board in, I can't have this screw screwed in all the way. There we go, now I can screw it. Okay, with the one screw in place, you can see the alignment is good enough. So I can mark the positions of the other three holes on each of the boards. Now we make the holes we've just marked with a pin vise. And with these last holes done, the case is now finished. Okay, now we use the same kind of standoffs and screws that we used for the first hole on each board. And we thread the DAC board on first, because it's the trickiest. Now the DAC board's on the screw heads, we can tighten up those screws. Now we place the streamer board in place, make sure that it fits nicely, and it does. I like to use fairly long pillars to screw in the boards rather than nuts, because these are so much easier for my fat fingers to turn. Now we just have to stick the Wi-Fi antenna in place, in a convenient spot. Now we get to connect the cable that goes between the two boards, and it's very important to use the one from the DAC board and not any of the cables that were in the, with the mini, because this one is a very specific length. So this cable plugs into the connector. It's furthest away from the connectors on the boards. One last thing is to put some small rubber feet on the bottom of the case. And here it is, our finished Hi-Fi streamer. I'll connect the Wi-Fi streamer to a stereo system that's perfect if you're on a really tight budget, but still expect good quality sound. This is the Ayima AO7 Max amplifier, which has plenty of clean power to drive this pair of Polk Audio XT15 speakers. Now that it's connected, it's time to set it up. And the way we do that is with our smartphone. First, we have to go to the App Store and install an app called Forstream. So we type it in the search field. There it is, so we hit get. Once the iPhone's verified our identity and installed the app, then we can press open. To give the app the permissions it needs, we click OK, then allow, and then OK. Then you click the green next button, and when asked, you click OK, to let the app use the phone's Bluetooth for setup purposes. It's gonna look and not find your device because it's not set up yet, so it'll ask you if you wanna add a device, and you click on that. Here it's asking if the light on the device is blinking, and in our case it is, so we click the green button. There's our streamer, so we can click set up this device. Next, the app's gonna suggest that you connect the streamer to the Wi-Fi network that the phone's connected to, you normally want to do this, so you enter the password for that network and click Next. Once you see the stream is connected to the network, you just click Next. Then it's going to ask you to rename the device, and I just called it Rogers Streamer. You then just click Next in the top right, and you'll see your device there all set up and ready. play music, go back to the Forstream app, select the Browse tab, and then choose the music service that you want to use. I'll open Spotify. Then go to the little speaker icon that's to the left of the play button. Select whatever you called your music streamer. Then choose a track to play. I'll select some royalty-free music that I can freely use on YouTube. <music> I spent a lot of time comparing this DIY project with these commercially produced streamers on a variety of different music. The sound is definitely a step up from any of them. It's fuller, smoother, and doesn't have the edginess that the others show by comparison. I can connect those other streamers to a really good DAC, and the sound gets a little more dynamic and spacious, 
But this WIM Mini and SMSL SU1 combination is almost three times the price. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you buy anything from the product links in the description, it doesn't cost you any more, but a small commission helps to support this channel and is very much appreciated. Thanks for watching, everyone.